Hi, we're here to talk about the first generation of college students. I'm here with Abel Granados. I'm Dr. Chapa, the Associate Director for the Center for the Study of Latino Media and Markets. Abel, how are you? I'm good, thank it you It is so much. great to see you here after a few years. It's good to be here. I want to show you a video. Are you ready? I'm ready. Somebody mentioned mentors. Who are those people that have supported you and kind of kept you in school and sort of encouraged you and become sort of like probably even more than a mentor, but, but really a friend to you and so forth. Dr. Yeah. Keith Winky, he's, yeah, he's really been a really good support. He, he's helped me out with all kinds of stuff, letters of recommendations and, you yeah. know, such, you know, it's really... So what, in your case, it's a professor, right? Yeah, he's my trumpet professor. Yeah. Where I come from, it's a small town. Uh, I don't know how everybody else goes, but a lot of my friends are all married now. and They never <laughs> went to school. And, they got married at 18, and then they all got kids running around. And I'm like, I'm at school, what are you doing? You, you want to go out? No. Yeah. 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 Abel, yeah. tell me, how do you feel while you were watching the... It, was, it brings TV. back a lot of good memories, a lot of good times. Uh, it reminds me that the times that I spent here at Texas State were some of the best and happiest of my life. What years were you here at Texas State? I graduated in 2005. Uh -huh. you know, I started in, two, in 1998. Uh, but I was a part-time and a full-time student, so that's why it took me a little while to graduate. But I have no regrets because I finished. What for? What uh, music you? education. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a band director. I'm a music teacher. And I obtained my music degree here from Texas State. How did you feel when you were selected to be part of this project? It was truly an honor. Uh, it was Dr. Nahira came to me and approached me with this opportunity. Uh, to explain about my struggles as a first-generation college student at this campus, what I had to go through and, and that sort of thing, and he liked my answers to that. So he asked me to be a part of the original project. And uh, Can you tell me a little bit about those struggles that you had at the time? Uh, well, the thing about first gen, none of my, my, my mom, I was raised by a single mother, and she did not go to college, and uh, she was raising two boys, me and my brother, Ralph, and we both came to Texas State. My brother actually graduated with two science degrees, and uh, I graduated with my music degree. Uh, and we did that through the support of our mother. You know, uh, we didn't have a lot of financial support that she could throw our way. So we had to find those resources, you know, that were at our disposal to help us, you know, continue and finish our degree. What did she tell you to make you go to college? Lots of moral support. Lots of very, lots of encouragement from the start. She had always told us, you're going to go to college. I want you to succeed. You know, I never went and I want you to go you know, to experience it, you know, you'll get educated. And uh, she knew that I wanted to be a teacher, and uh, that's where I am now. That's the path that brought me to where I am now in life. Yeah. Did your family watch the video? My family, yes, they did. And what did they tell you? Well, they, they were proud of me. You know, it's not every day they get to see me on TV or, you know, on the screen, on a DVD, but it was great. And friends? A friend, I'm not sure if too many friends have seen that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, now let's talk about uh, graduation. Mm -hmm. What happened after that? Um, I graduated in 2005, in December of 2005. After that, I got my first teaching uh, position at Crystal City High School. That's my alma mater. I graduated from there in 1998. And uh, I had the opportunity to go back to my high school and be a teacher there. And it was very successful. We took the state, uh, we took the marching band, the state marching contest, and we got third place. Okay, tell me, why did you decide to go there? Did you want to be close to home? Um, um, it, your part mom? of it was to be closer to my family, close to home. The other was the opportunity to go back to where I went to high school, you know, to be back there as a teacher, and which was a very, very great experience. How did you get the offer? Uh, I saw online at a job posting. There's a, a place online where band directors can go and see if there are in openings at various schools throughout the state. Um, so I went on there and I saw that there was a position open, you know, at my How school. How long did you have to wait after graduation to... To get uh, my first job? Exactly. Uh, um, I graduated in December and for teachers there aren't many openings in December. So from December to June when I got hired, I had to manage a gas station. Okay. And so that's what paid the bills until I got my first uh, teaching position. Where? Was it here? It was here in San Marcos. It was here in San, here in San yes. Marcos? Mm -hmm. Okay. With, uh, and at the same time, you were looking for a job? Yeah, at the same time. You know, okay. I had already told How my boss. How many applications did you send out? Just one. What, oh, for, wow. for my teaching? For your teaching. Just one. I mean, I, I, had, uh, I had seen that opportunity, and the people who were there knew me already, the administrators, the superintendent, the other band directors. So, you know, as soon as they found out that I was interested, you know, I got hired. So do you feel through the process? The community was helping you at the time? Very much so. 
very okay. much so. They, they, it's a small town. Mm -hmm. I come from Crystal City, Texas, small town of about 9,000 people, you know, and everybody knows each other, you know, everybody, you know, same faces, everything. So when they found out I was going back to teach there, well, I, I know that a few people were very excited because they know that band is my thing. I'm very, okay. you know, it's something I'm very passionate about. And uh, we were very successful with that marching band. Why do you think their feelings are having you, you know, um, a local with mm -hmm. a graduate degree and then applying for a job? Um, I think uh, it was very, uh, they encouraged me, you know, but not a lot of people from my hometown, you know, go out to college and, Why? and finish up. Uh, very low economic. I come from a very poor, you know, town, very poor county. What uh, is this, the name of the town? Crystal City. Crystal City. Crystal City. And uh, it's in Zavala County. Uh, you know, one of the poorest counties in the nation. So people, you know, there, are, there aren't any Ivy League institutions around there, nothing like that. It's not upscale. So a lot of people are just used to just working, just graduating high school, join the workforce, no higher education. Higher education culturally isn't really stressed upon, you know, where I come from. So I wanted to be exceptional, you know, and I, I knew that to be a teacher, I had to go to college and, and do that. So. Since when did you know that you wanted to be a, or become a teacher? I did not know that I wanted to be a teacher until I was a senior in high school. Yeah, senior, and until then I wanted to be several things. So who was your mentor? Uh, your in high model? school. In high school. My band director, his name was okay. uh, Mr. Jorge Ibarra. So Jorge Ibarra mm -hmm. made you believe in he, higher education he and did. he helped you to go to college. He was my inspiration to be a band director. Okay. You know, it's because of him that I wanted to be a band director. He was my band director. I saw that, how saw how he did his job. I saw how he was with the kids. You know, I saw how I, he was successful. I wanted that for myself too, you know. And I had the opportunity to tell him I'm friends of his. I told him, look, you, you're my inspiration. And I shook his hand and, you know, it was great. And then after him, then when you were here in college, who mm -hmm. was your mentor? My mentor, as I mentioned on film, uh -huh. uh, was Dr. Keith Winking. You know, he's uh, the individual who recruited me to Texas State University, uh, stole me from another university. I was all set to go somewhere else, but he came and recruited me and sent me here to San Marcos. And uh, he, he mentored me, he took me under his wing, showed me everything, prepared me as much as he could for my career in teaching. Great, which, and who helped you with the process of looking for a job? Looking for a job, uh, just online resources. You know, I go to uh, the Texas Music Educators Association. That's the band director organization for Texas. They have a great job posting website, you know, on their page. And you can go on there and check anytime you want. And I had references from my professors, and they helped me out, too. They were a big help, actually. I have a lot of students who are afraid to graduate mm -hmm. because they don't know what is coming after. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your experience, your well, right now the good with the, and the bad things that can, I mean, happened to you. Yeah, definitely. Well, with the economic climate the way it is right now, and that's very understandable. Those mm -hmm. are very, very legitimate fears and concerns that uh, an undergraduate getting out into the, the world right now would Especially would first yes. generation students graduating because mm -hmm. they don't have parents who went through this process. Yeah, especially. Can you tell us a little bit well, about um, it? Well, I told, I told students, I also mentor them because I have students that graduate, and I'm, I'm all about Texas State. I'm, I wear my shirts, and I have my sticker on the truck, and they see that. And I, a few of them come here, and I tell them, well, are you gonna go? you're going to Texas State. Congratulations. Like, what made you choose? Well, actually, sir, I see you with all into it, and you advertise, and, you know, and Texas State, you told us how it changed your life. I want that for me, too. And I'm like, well, good job. Go get it. I tell them that Texas State changed my life for the positive. And it was very well. It was, it was a good thing. But for undergrads that are getting out now, I tell them, look, the finances are going to be the big thing. Save your money, pay your student loans. That's, that's my advice to them. If they can get, you know, at least do those two things and get steady work, you know, that would be a great thing. But the, the debt that comes with students not wanting to graduate is, comes with finances. The money. Will I be broke when I graduate? That's their concern. Um, so that's probably why a lot of people, you know, even myself, I love the college lifestyle. I didn't want to leave it. So it took me a little bit to graduate also, but I did. I finished. I finished my degree. I got my teacher certification and I teach now. Abel, it's so great that you are becoming a, a role model. Mm -hmm. 
I appreciate how, that. How do you feel about it? Uh, I know that there's students who look up to me because of my job and what I do. So I have to set an example and a positive one. And for my students, I set the example as a, as a college graduate. Mm -hmm. I set the example as a teacher. And, uh, and when I'm on that, that podium teaching them, uh, you know, I teach them about music. I teach them about life as well. You know, um, first generation college students uh, like myself are sometimes fatherless, like myself. Uh, a lot of my male students don't have a positive male role model in their life. So I have to be the one to show them about how to be polite, how to talk to people, how to, you know, grow up and mature. Because some of my kids don't understand. They don't get that mentorship at home somehow, somewhere. So they come to school and I have to be the one to help do that. So it definitely takes a village. You know, it does. I believe so. That's right. right. Yes. Now tell me. What kind of expectations do you have when you graduated? And uh, did you reach them um, after eight years? Have I reached them yet? Actually, my goal as a band director yeah. is to produce uh, fine musicians, you know, excellent students. Uh, you know, I like to instill into my students some moral character into them too. Um, so doing that, and I see the results of that every day. You know, I see the results of that, and I love what I do. Yeah, that's great. So you are there. Oh yeah, I, I'm definitely there. But there's still more I have to work on. There's How did your education goals. help you to get there? My edu well, without my education, I can't do a lot of the stuff that I do with uh, band directing. It's not like other classroom teachers. I'm in charge of teaching different instruments to students. You know, whatever the instrument is, it is my job to know the everything about an instrument, whether it's a saxophone, a trumpet, a flute, drums. I'm the expert. You know, and I have to show and share that expertise with the, with the young student who does not know, you know. And that's a, that's a great part of my job because I see the results instantly, you know. We, we start teaching the kids in September. Their first concert, concert is already in November. So they only have, what, two months to really start gaining proficiency. And, uh, and we do it. You know, every concert that I have performed is a success. It's a reminder of the success that I do every day in my, in my band hall. So I love that. That part of my job is great. How many uh, professionals do you know that they didn't pursue a, a higher education? How many, uh -huh. and, and do very well. And do very well. Um, let me see. Almost all the professionals that I know of are college educated. It's very exceptional that I know somebody who did not go to college and uh, gain that same type of success. It does happen, though. There are the Mark Zuckerbergs and the Bill Gateses of the world who didn't graduate college but still managed to you know, have great success. Uh, so it is possible, but it's minimal and they are exceptional. You know, mostly, most people that I know that do what I do that are successful have at least their bachelors. And I'm seeing more people getting their masters nowadays. Do you see yourself? Doing a master degree? I've never really thought about it, but I'm just seeing more and more people. And then I'm seeing the opportunities in my career that a master's degree can present to me. So, uh, and since I'm a teacher, but I don't want to put my career on hold. So I'm researching into online programs, maybe, you know, a summer program. That That's sort great. of thing. You know, yeah. So grad, grad school is something that I have not really put any serious thought about until recently. So like how come? the last six months, I'm seeing just people around me doing it and, and how it's working for them. So maybe the master's degree might be a thing for me, too. Great. You know, Great. So I, but I never really did consider postgraduate education until now. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? In 10 years? Yes, uh, and as a role model. As a role model, my lifestyle definitely would be more domestic, hopefully, you know, with, with the house and the wife and the kids, hopefully. I'll have that. I don't have that now. Uh, I'll be the head band director. I'll be running a program. I'll have directors under me, and and uh, it'll be successful. There'll be a jazz programs, mariachi programs, uh, piano classes. You know, that's what I like. That's what I want my band program to do. What would you like to say to those um, uh, students who are uh, getting ready to graduate? How how can you tell them to help them to start a career? Um, know that you're not going to start at the top. All right, there's a totem pole, and you, you got to start somewhere. It's usually entry level, so you climb mm -hmm. that ladder. You know, there's a ladder with every career, whether it's military or the private sector, corporate. Um, you know, there's structures, there's, you know, and if you want success, you don't wait and sit there for it to fall in your lap. You've got to work for it. 
You've got to show, you've got to put your name out, you've got to put, show everybody around you, including your superiors, what you have, what it, you know, the talent, what you're capable of, what you can do. And as soon as you start impressing the right people, the great things start happening. You know, you know, you start getting the promotions, you start getting more responsibility in your, in your chosen career path. And uh, so, you know, my advice is, you know, you're going to get out, start somewhere, but start at the bottom and just climb your way to the top. You know, nobody, you know, it's rare for anyone to start at the top. What would you say to those um, people who hesitate to send, you know, to support higher education? Um, or parents who do not want to send their kids to, I'd to, like out, to of, out of town to college. And in my career, I, I do talk to some parents uh, who don't have those goals for their students. They, per they tell me, well, we don't want her to go to college. You know, after she's done with high school, she's going to work. Or she's going to do the family business. Or we're going to take her up north. And that sort of thing. And to those parents, I tell them, uh, well, studies have shown, you know, that the average college graduate will make $1 million more than the average non-graduate. Okay, and as soon as I bring up the money into the situation, they, they get quiet and they listen. They're all ears because money is obviously an important factor. Um, and I tell them, you know, not just that. I mean, you, your, your student will be more smart, open up all these opportunities. A bachelor's degree is like money in the bank, pretty much. You know, it opens up all these doors for you. Uh, as opposed to not having, you know, a bachelor's degree. So um, I encourage, you know, as many students as I can to go to college. What is your final message for those who did support you, especially your mom? Oh, I have just nothing but a million thanks. Okay, it wasn't just my mom. It was, uh, I was raised by my mom and her two sisters, uh, you know, and I have them to thank too. So it's really like I have three moms, you know. Um, they were a huge support system, even now. You know, even now. So I have that. I have them to thank. Thanks a million. <laughs> Abel, thank you so much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for sharing no your life with us. Anytime.